gear up as Cash Miller and the team of accomplished guests steer you on an enlightening voyage filled with valuable tips, fresh insights, and effective strategies. Welcome to Marketing Masters, the agency power show. Hello, everyone. This is Cash Miller, the host of Marketing Masters. I'm the CEO of Titan Digital. Today, we're talking website analytics, and there's been a lot going on in the space. You know, Google Analytics has rolled out their whole, you know, G4. It is like there's pros and cons to this. Some people are really liking it. Some people not so much. It's a big shakeup. Google hasn't really changed anything with website analytics in a long time. They've made minor adjustments. They've this time it's been an overhaul, and we want to be able to dive into that because there's just so much. So I've got Jesse Ringer Method and Metric. Uh, it's an agency out of Canada, and they do SEO. And Jesse, it is great to have you because I know you are going to know everything going on in the website analytic world right now. Hey, Cash. Uh, thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. That's great. So we're going to dive right in, you know, because let like me say G4. I mean, I, first, I want to start with what are your initial impressions on these changes? Uh, <laughs> they're not great. Um, but honestly, uh, you know, it's, it's a big departure from what universal analytics was and, you know, it's definitely updating how we track performance, um, in a now like very mobile first kind of world. And I think that although there's a lot of things that it doesn't do yet, um, GA4 is, is a big improvement in measuring a lot of, uh, components of, of our analytics methodology that just weren't there in universal analytics. Now, as you know, cause you're, yeah, you know, I guess like what's the, when it comes to tracking, I think a lot of companies don't really appreciate and take advantage, you know? So you, being that you're really hyper-focused on SEO and stuff, you know, what is the role first, you know, from, you know, of analytics, what, what can, when companies take a hard look at it, how do they benefit from it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, with anything to do with your website, you need to be able to measure the performance of it. You know, you have a website to help them, you know, help you generate more revenue, um, you know, engage with your audience, uh, build a brand, you know, a website is an essential piece of every business now. Um, and without analytics, it's really hard to make informed decisions about the direction you need to go with your business and with your website in general. Like, how can you decide what products are selling? How can you decide what content people resonate with? You know, if you're going to add a new component or element to your business offering, like, how do you know it's going to be worthwhile? And so without analytics, Google analytics, um, you know, it's really hard to make an informed decision and know that you're, you're moving in the right direction. Well, like, so what kind of insights specifically, like di kind of dive in, I mean, we've had universal analytics for a long time, right? And so people are going to be a little bit more familiar maybe with what it can do, but you know, really what a lot of people just know, like surface level, because mm -hmm. analytics just traditionally and, and G4 just kind of makes things, you know, it's providing more insight but there's always been a lot of stuff, a lot of information you can get out of it. So what kind of information do you like to take advantage of, you know, that and you would be recommending that people, you know, when you're looking at it, how do you learn from it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, as an SEO person, as a marketer that specializes in inbound marketing initiatives that are more passive in nature, you know, we're looking to see what people care about. Uh, with relation to our clients. So um, what content is showing up in the search results? What content are people reading and spending time on? Um, you know, what countries are coming from, what devices they're using, uh, what marketing channels are actually driving that traffic? Is it social media? Is it our newsletters? Is it SEO? Um, is it paid ads? Like all those things are, are obviously very important to us. Um, but from a more tactical or strategic perspective, we're looking at, um, you know, what pages people are spending the most time on, uh, what pages are people seeking out once they get to the website? You know, um, are they coming from the homepage and then going to a blog post or a pricing page or a product page? You know, we're looking at those ideas. Um, you know, where are people leaving the website? You know, what are um, the final pages? Are people getting stuck on a checkout page? Are people, you know, 
looking at a product and leaving? Um, are they coming to the pricing page and just closing that tab? And so those are all things that we're actively looking at. Um, and then, yeah, we can just always go like much deeper and then looking at the engagement and the goal conversions and the, you know, what people are actually taking action on. Yeah, I've always liked to, you know, whenever I've, you know, dove into specific accounts, you know, especially when you're talking content on websites and whatnot, and you're talking, you know, what traffic is a lot of times everybody thinks of the homepage often as being like, you know, that's your doorway and everything. But larger sites are, you know, everything's a doorway, essentially, you know, so it's where, you know, which pages are performing, and you can look at things like page views and such. But then if you dive further in, it's where's the traffic coming from for that specific page versus, you know, the site as a whole, you know, so you can see what your specific efforts, you know, um, for example, if you're planning links on certain sites with the intent of driving traffic, not just for the, you know, the juice of the backlink and whatnot, um, you know, what you're able to, yeah, are you getting something of benefit? And then it, you can also dive into, you know, look at bounce rates and things like that. Are they sticking around or, you know, like, I always like the example of like a blog post that, you know, you see this like high generating post, it's getting lots of traffic. You can see it's like showing up well on Google and everybody bounces off, you know, because it's like, well, they, they got the piece of information that they wanted, but you didn't have anything to kind of keep them there, draw, you know, push them to another page, get them to, you know, it's not sticky enough, you know, not, a, not for the site as a whole. So there's a lot we're able to actually analyze, you know, from mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, when you're like working on accounts, like, do you have any particular, I guess, you know, since, you know, the name method, right? So what's, yeah, uh, my understanding is you have a bit of a methodology, you know, how would your methodology relate to like, or utilize the analytics? What are you specifically looking at when you're trying to get something to rank? Because it gives, you know, business yeah. owners and stuff, website owners, um, kind of an idea of where they should be focused. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, the first thing that we're always looking at is the number of entrances to that page, regardless if they are coming from uh, organic search, paid ads, uh, social media, all those things like it matters in the sense of like, do your readers and your audience care about this content? You know, we do a ton of research, like before we get into creating the content around like, what are people searching for? What kind of answers are they after? Um, you know, how should we structure that content? So ideally, we already have a good sense of this. But for your specific brand, we're looking to see if if this content actually resonates with your audience. From there, we're going to look at engagement metrics within GA4. So one thing that GA4 does really well now, um, especially in the sense of like mobile usage, is tracking scroll depth. So we can see how far mm -hmm. people are scrolling down a page um, and getting a sense of like, okay, are people actually reading the whole thing? Are they scrolling through? Are they only going to the top of the page and then exiting? So we'll look at those kinds of metrics um, to get a sense of like, how engaging the content is. Um, and then from there, we'll also look at, are they going to other pages? Obviously, blog posts tend to have a higher bounce rate or an exit rate, mm -hmm. just purely because when people are doing a search, they are looking for an answer. And once they find that answer, they're done. You know, very rarely do people go, oh, that was a great post. I'm going to go look at their other posts. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. And so we kind of have to think about what is the, the logical and strategic next step from that blog post? You know, um, if we're talking about a how to, is there a registration or like a follow up to be like, get some more information for, about this? Um, is there a newsletter sign up? And so we're looking at that kind of thinking and that experience in order to, you know, entice people to carry on in a natural and, you know, non-intrusive kind of way. Um, you know, if you go from like how to t clean your shoes as an, an example to here is a shoe subscription service, like that is not a logical next step. Maybe the next step would be here are the cleaning products that you can buy. You know, and so we want to think about those kinds of things when we're assessing content. Um, and then the biggest thing, too, is, you know, ultimately, like, how can we get people to come back next time? You know, how do we make sure that that's a compelling offer? And that can be done through newsletter signups, um, you know, and specific webinars and events and things like that. So we're always kind of assessing. Yeah. 
what comes next. Let me um, ask you, I want you to dive into a little bit more about the scroll depth thing, because that's something that did not exist you know, on the old one. Um, but for a long time, we've had heat maps and stuff. And one of the things that they it's always kind of covered is that same idea, you know, not just where people are clicking on the heat map and such, but, you know, also how many people are scrolling down and whatnot. So I think it's really interesting that, you know, uh, GA4 is, you know, including it in there. What are you learning, you know, from that? Yeah. So I think one thing to, to kind of lead with is that with GA4, it now is really focused on event tracking and engagement. And so scroll depth is one part of that, um, where people are clicking, what videos they're watching, what they're engaging with on those pages um, is hugely important. And so what we're learning is like, you know, what actually needs to be on those pages at the core of it. Like if we're seeing that people are only scrolling about on average, like halfway down the page and they're stopping, like what information at the bottom of the page is not being seen, mm -hmm. you know, and perhaps why are people stopping on that page and why are they not going to the end? Is there a pop-up? Is there a video? Uh, is the, the content not good? Um, and then you can tie that in with like exit rates. You can tie that in with page views and like where they're going next. Like maybe there's something great at the middle of the page that is driving people to another page, which is great. Um, do you need all that content at the bottom of the page then? Should that be somewhere else? And so yeah. we're able to really understand at a better level, like what people actually care about with regards to the content on our websites. Yeah, well, with website design in general, one of the most common mistakes is is alignment of con, you know, content where they put it, you know. So, I mean, I always I always hate when I see like you have the form and it's on the bottom of the page because you think people are going to scroll through the whole you know page and then fill it out when they get to the end. That's not how it works, you know, in reality. So you see a huge drop off, you know, it, typically of any page as you're scrolling down, you know, it's hundred percent of the top, but by the time you get to the bottom, it's 10%, you yeah. know, so being able, but I like the, the fact that you can see where they're stopping. So is there, you know, what's that point within the page that, you know, they're just not continuing. And then maybe it's some information that it is actually a draw for them, you know, that, you know, that they're taking an action on that, you know, that piece of information. Um, so it's something important that you might benefit if you moved it up actually higher to get more people to engage with it, you know, and you also know, you know, what needs to be removed. It's like, like I say, what's on the bottom. This would be especially important, I think, with any kind of landing pages and how you would tie them into uh, anything that's paid ads, you know, for it. So I think that's yeah. like great. Um, you know, when, what other like changes, I guess, with, you know, GA4, like what else are you seeing that is an improvement over, you know, the previous version, what you can do now? Yeah, I would say the the ability to track mobile visitors and and the engagement that they do because if you think about your own mobile experience like you you scroll a lot right and you mm -hmm. don't necessarily like you pinch and zoom and you touch and like before in the old universal analytics it wouldn't really track the experience as well on mobile devices in terms of where you're going and so forth and so that's one aspect that i really appreciate um well, I was, I was going to say, like, when, you know, Universal was actually put out, mobile wasn't a huge thing, you know, and we still even had, like, mobile versions of websites, not responsive, but actually separate sites, you know, those old MDOT and stuff, yep. you know, so it wasn't, um, they didn't have the emphasis, but now, depending on the industry, you can see anywhere up to, like, 90% of your traffic come through mobile and such, you know, yep. versus, um you know, what was going to, you know, the, what's going to be desktop. It really depends on the business you're in. Like, you know, with what we do, we still see more, you know, can see a decent amount of desktop, right? But we'll get a fair mm -hmm. share of mobile as well. Yeah. But it's a matter of people maybe want their computers because they're trying to do a little more in-depth research. They're going to read a little more and such. They're maybe doing it at work, you know, stuff like that. But if you, like, we work with a lot of home service businesses. I tell you, you know, if you don't have a great mobile experience, forget it because, you know, there, I go to my phone, you know, to find, you know, the HVAC guy or whatever it may be. Yeah. yeah. In which case, 
you know, it's going to be all mobile. And so really being able to dive into what's working there, because we have this tendency to always look at the desktop, but that's not how people are actually using it. You know, like when we're, you know, even the business owner will go to the desktop first and they'll say, oh, it looks great. And then it's like, well, did you bother to look at the mobile? Because I guarantee you that's where your customers are going. Yeah. Yeah. To add to that, too, it's like now we have way more video content. We have Mm -hmm. way more audio content than ever before. And so those two things, too, that universal analytics didn't really make it easy for us to track, you know, how many people watch those videos on those pages? How many people click to listen to our podcast or the audio version of that blog post? And so now, right out of the box, GA4 does like, you know, you can see how many people are clicking to watch a video on a page. How many people are clicking to listen to your podcast right there. So those two things as well, I think the ability to track more uh, diverse sets of of content uh, is a huge bonus for us. Yeah, that you're right about that, especially because video is used, you know, obviously a ton um, and including on websites, because a lot of people are putting, you know, whether it's a promo video, some sort of a product related video, you know, mm-hmm. e-commerce, that'd be really big because you have a lot of um, video related to especially more complicated products, you know, of how you might use it and stuff when they're trying to kind of sell it, you know, online, you want to see it in use, you know, um, anything that's like more complicated you, know, you want to be able to do that. So to see that people are actually watching the videos without like, you know, if it was a YouTube embed or something like that, and having to go over there and see the stats. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you're saying, is it able to um, track how long they're watching that stuff? I, I, I assume this is for yeah. an embedded video. You know, that's, that's one you've actually, you know, loaded onto the site, right? Yeah, you can do both. You can track like the clicks on the YouTube embedded videos. Um so like through iframes and such, uh, but also, yeah, the stuff you have directly embedded, like hosted on your own website. Hmm. Um, yeah. And you can set up the custom. It does t- require a bit of coding, but you can track uh, like where they stop, where they start, you know, what uh-huh. that all looks like. Yeah. Um, so that part's hugely helpful. I mean, we could do that before with Google Tag Manager, but it yeah, obviously but- required a lot of technical knowledge. And yeah, it wasn't something that... An- an average business owner could do quite simply. Uh, you needed a developer and someone who was pretty comfortable working with the code to get that working. Yeah, and of course, not everybody's going to do it. And the thing is, is with anything stats related, why like you, you do it if you really are going to take advantage of it? Are you actually going to be looking at it? Because yeah. a lot of people, it's like it's good, good intense, and then they never actually make use of the data because yeah, they don't bother exactly. to. They never yeah. check it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what are you seeing, like? How do you go, like, I guess, when you're measuring the effectiveness of, of a site, you know, and, you know, since, like, say, SEO results and things like that, what are your primary areas that you want to look at within analytics? Because, you know, there's a, there's a ridiculous amount of actual data that we can look at, but what I've found is most people have certain sets that they're really focused on. So yeah. what are what's your recommendation? Because a business, you know, business owner is not going to be as dug in. So where would you recommend that they're being, yeah. you know, they focus so, their attention? You know, at the end of the day, your website is meant to help generate more revenue. And so looking at whatever those components are, obviously every website is different, but like if we're looking at an e-commerce store, you're going to look at, um, man, what products people are viewing, you know, how much revenue those are generating, so forth, those kinds of things. If you're a service-based or like a lead generation type uh, business or website, um, looking at form completions, uh, form starts, uh, you know, those kinds of things. If you have a chat bot, looking at that kind of engagement. Uh, obviously, we want to see that the traffic numbers are going up, but also that our conversion rates are going up as well. Um, And then looking at more high level things just as kind of like breadcrumbs in terms of, you know, the where we're going, what direction we're taking, like the number of keywords that the the site ranks for, um, you know, what we're keyword targets we're actually ranking for and how high we're ranking for them, uh, what pages are actually ranking in the search results. Those aren't necessarily indicative of like great business outcomes because you could rank number one for a thousand keywords, but if they don't generate clicks or even any revenue like Mm -hmm. they're kind of useless they're entirely useless they're just vanity metrics so we use those as like a way to gauge 
you know, the canary in the coal mine, that kind of thing, like to see if we're moving in the right direction. But ultimately, traffic numbers going up, are they getting to the business pages? So like product pages, service pages, pricing pages, those kinds of things, contact page as well. Um, those are all good signs that we're looking to actively measure and, and share with our, our clients. All right. What are some of the, okay, so you've mentioned, you know, likes and dislikes. So let's cover some of the dislikes in comparison. You know, what are, mm-hmm. what are some of the things that you're, that, Can, that you're thinking are downsides here? Yeah, you know, with this system, and and we always love, you know, Google, Facebook, you know, like they they have this like, hey, we're going to do this, and it's going to be the greatest thing, and you know, we're, it's going to be so much better. And then when they roll it out, we're like, why did you do this? Yeah, <laughs> you know, so. uh, I got a lot of those. Um, I probably need to add another hour to this podcast. But, <laughs> um, okay, first things first. At the core of it, GA four is built off of the uh, app analytics. Uh, analytics platform that they had created. But really at the core of it all, it's an effort to further entrench businesses with Google ads because everything is event-based. And so Google ads is built to like, be like, Hey, do you want to run ads against people that scroll 50% further. Hmm. Do you want to run ads against people that watch this video? And so it's a way for Google to get more money out of businesses, first and Hmm. foremost. Like it's not an effort to improve things for us. It's an effort to improve things for their ad platform that generates a lot of revenue for Google. That's my first well, Complaint. that's like the core of it. Well, that's an interesting thing because like we've been running, you know, we run a lot of paid ads and such and Google recently, because some of those things resonate, um, Google rolled out their max campaigns, which, you know, tie in video and everything else. And so if you're linking up to your analytics account, the idea is, is that you're getting more other data that you would normally get through even your ads account. Like yeah. you can, you're going to be able to take a deeper dive, but I can see where you're coming from because it's going to encourage you you know, yeah, it, yeah. they're trying to push it, and they've always had where you can link the you know the two accounts up, but the data from a paid standpoint was never you know as extensive. So it sounds like they you know what you're saying is it's like now it's way more intertwined. Yeah, like the root of GA four is to help the Google Ads. It's not there to help other marketers. It's not really there as a, at the forefront to help SEOs. It's not at the forefront to help social media managers. It's mm-hmm. there to really get people on board with like, Oh, I can like run ads on this. Like let's do it, you know? And so there's that the other side of it, there's like little things like in the old version, you could add annotations. So if you made a big Mm -hmm. change to your business, if you were adding a new marketing campaign, you could go and put in the date being like, on this date, we ran this campaign. On this date, we were featured in the New York Times. Yeah. So you can see the They don't have that yet. Yeah. Um, Also, like you could filter out specific traffic. Like let's say, well, Canadian business, as an example, we don't care if we get traffic from the US. We don't care if we get traffic from, you know, Russia or China or the UK. And we could filter that out. Right now, you can't do that. Um, You can't Uh, really filter out internal traffic. Well, that the when, what you just mentioned is huge because we used to have to like with the old one, you, the bot traffic and stuff would come through, yeah, and you'd have issues and stuff, and you could see that it was something you know triggering it, but it wasn't real, and we'd have to filter it out to get rid of it to show because it, otherwise it would spike your you know what your traffic numbers, and you know it was all fake. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Like they have, I will say that GA four has done a much much better job of filtering out bot traffic. Okay. Um, yeah, on its own with without, without having to do yeah. anything with it. Okay, yeah, good. for sure. Out of the box, it's so much better. Like, let's, yeah, let's uh, point out some good things too. But like, um, you know, people are working from home now. Like, how do you filter that out? It's not e- easy to do. Um, you know, if, uh, man, there's so, like filtered views, um, you can't create a testing environment for, for different goals and engagement things. You have hmm. just one view. So you can't easily... Um, make changes like that. You can't create a testing environment for your team to look at things. Uh, hmm, man, there's like oh. lots of little things. The reporting is a little different. Uh, you can't 
you can create some unique segments, but it's not as straightforward as it once was. Uh, the reporting things are not quite there. Well, um, Google, so, Google's always had a habit of, you know, some of the what we find to be some of the best metrics, they take them away. Yeah, you know, yeah, and that, yeah. they've always done that on the ad side because it's like, well. You know, and they'll give, give some reason, but ultimately it kind of goes towards, hey, spend more money because we don't, you don't really know where you're coming in. Yeah. Exactly. And they're yeah. doing that a lot with, um, you know, on the paid side, we've, the rumor that I've heard a, co- you know, a couple of times is that with keywords, they're getting potentially going everything towards broad match and getting rid of the phrase and the exact match and stuff yeah. because it's like, and they're going to modify how the broad match works. I guess it's supposed to be more AI intuitive or whatever. Like it's, it's, yeah. so it's putting, you know, more relevant stuff than you were getting previously. But, you know, that, that stuff bums me out. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, and I always like to, you know, back, you know, it's been a while now, but the average, you know, positioning and stuff to give you a, a, an indication of where you're coming in. It, you know, like I say, so it sounds like with, you know, GA4, they're, some of that's getting tweaked too, and some of the best things that you could do, especially for testing purposes, are maybe they're going to put it in because they can always roll out version two or whatever. Yeah, you know, so yeah. maybe they they add it back in. But you know, once they see who, yeah, you know, how many complaints they get about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we like a good example for quite a few of our clients anyway has been with like they have a login area for their members as you know, or for and so you can't exclude that traffic you know it's not marketing traffic it's traffic very much pointed at going to this page to log in and access the details whatever that is and you can't exclude that and you can't and so those things like really skew your ability to dissect the data because you're like okay 80 percent of our traffic are paid members as an example and like yeah this is they have a very direct like a yeah. Process, right? so. yeah, it's it's already traffic you know you're going to get. You don't need to see it in the numbers, so you want to be able to exclude it, especially in the top-line numbers. You know, it's fine that you can show how many people went to this particular page, but if it's taking the, the traffic for the site as a whole and it's boosting it up by X amount, you know, that's yeah. a problem because you you can still do it and subtract it and everything, but you got to do all the math. You can't just put in a rule and say, okay, don't show this so we can show what the real results of our efforts are. Correct. Yeah. So that's like, I'm hopeful that those things are coming because it, it will erode the ability for people to trust the data and use it in a meaningful way. And, you know, granted Google analytics, it's free. It's a great tool. We're very fortunate that Google does that for free, but those things do come out. They have a vested interest in (laughs) Yeah, they have a vested yeah. interest in giving it away for, for free and stuff. But, you know, and like you okay. mentioned, you know, that they're integrating yeah. more of the paid stuff in there to encourage you. It's like, hey, what is this? You know, so if you see a stat and it says zero, but now you're wondering what the stat is in it, even in there for, and you're wondering why it's zero because it's not tracking anything. Well, hey, you could be, yeah. you know, buying this and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like I would, like for my own self, like I'd consider paying for an analytic service if I knew I could trust that data better and be able to like filter it in a way that was actually meaningful for my website and for my business. Let's, uh, um, let's talk about that though, you know, for a second, because um, there are services out there, but there's always been drawbacks to them as far as, you know, accuracy and stuff. What are your thoughts mm-hmm. about some of the you know stuff that exists? Yeah. I mean, we don't venture too far out of like the Google ecosystem to be fair, but uh, the ones that I have seen um, and used, like they're not as robust yet. Um, you know, Google has a lot of resources to to put into this mm-hmm. and they have millions and millions of websites to draw from in terms of like the data and all, all that stuff that they need to understand. And so that's part of it. Um, but again, like, you know, things like hot jar and heat mapping, those things are quite useful and, and pretty solid. Uh, and so I think that there is definitely room for a blended data set in terms of Google Analytics and something else. I don't know yet if if we would ever fully depart from GA. Uh, yeah. just it's just, it's I there, do. it's handy. I do wonder because of the scrolling part, whether they'll go as far as doing heat mapping as part of the, uh, 
you know, the data, I think that would be a good direction yeah. for them to go. Granted, you know, companies like Hotjar and stuff are, would hate that idea. Yeah, but you're yeah. already pulling so much more. You would think that they could, you know, Google yeah. could do it if they wanted to, I'm sure. They really could. Microsoft does it. Microsoft Clarity, it's free um as well i mean you're giving up your data but uh it's free. yeah there's nothing and, quite free <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's a it's a trade <laughs> yeah that's called, yeah okay it's a good trade yeah. uh and yeah like we use it to to my it's like hot jar um heat mapping rage clicks different clicks all that kind of stuff elements that people think are clickable there's tons of stuff in there that are really uh interesting but it's mm. free uh, or it's traded and uh, it's a good one to use as well. Yeah. Well, where do you think, you know, from an analytics perspective, like where, where do you see it going in the future? Have you got any ideas where you think that, you know, like Google will take it and stuff. And then also, you know, um, I, like what's the overall value? Why business owners often don't pay attention. You know, even when we send them reports as marketers and stuff, they still don't necessarily pay attention. You know, occasionally they'll come up with a question and say, okay, what about this or this or this? So where do you see it going and why should business owners really take the time to be looking at what we send them or what they have, you know, access to? Yeah. I mean, the reasons why you should look at your reports are, you know, you need to know, the overall health of your business beyond just how much revenue you're generating. You need to, I mean, one, it holds your agency accountable or your contractors accountable. Um, it'll allow you to make better informed decisions as your business grows and changes. Like obviously like the world's in a volatile place right now. And then you kind of always have to be thinking about what the next step is and you need that data to make an informed decision. Um, but where I think things are going, I mean, that'll really depend on AI and like our comfort level in adopting it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are always going to need humans to really, uh, understand the nuance of the numbers and the nuance of what they mean for each business. I think that that's something that AI is not there yet or it coming to anytime soon. Yeah. Um, but like those parts are really key and i think that in the future and i think that we'll have just um man like the ability to have more data at our fingertips and just have be able to make just smarter decisions um and you know as people mature and get more comfortable with the analytics and stuff like that i think that they're like such a great opportunity to make great business decisions based off this stuff now, as marketers, you know, we rely on the data, you know, to be able to do our jobs and stuff. So we want as much of it as we can get, you know, because yeah. otherwise, you know, how do we make improvements? So the, mm -hmm. that's why the data yeah. really matters. Yeah. yeah. One thing to add to that, too, it's like, I think uh, like figuring out what are the important metrics. Like we used to get clients really hung up about bounce rate mm -hmm. and the old way of tracking. Like it, it wasn't an effective method to track a good page, like a contact page could have a hundred percent bounce rate, but if they got the phone number or your address, like, yeah. isn't that a good experience? Yeah. So educating that, like, I think the awareness of, of what metrics are really important to a business owner and to the business mm -hmm. in general, I think that that's something that is going to be coming more apparent. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a, a good example. You know, bounce rate has always been one. You can have a blog post that crushes it as far as traffic, but also has a huge bounce rate. And it affects the overall view of the site quite dramatically, especially if you have one, you know, sometimes you get, you know, you can have a bunch of blog posts, but you have a couple that are like home runs on traffic. Yeah. You know, and they get a ton, but nobody sticks around. So your bounce through just, you know, the yeah. rate is through the roof. Yeah, exactly. And that's not necessarily indicative of a bad experience. Like that blog post could do everything you need it to do. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they'll come back in the future. So it's, uh, yeah. So those kinds of things like that, that education, that understanding of like what metrics business owners need to care about is like going to be something I think becomes more prevalent, you know, in the near term. Yeah. Well, this has been great, Jesse. I appreciate having you on. We've been talking, you know, Google Analytics, especially GA4. How would people get a hold of you? Uh, well, I'm 
very active on LinkedIn. Uh, Method and Metric is our page there, but also uh, Jesse Ringer. Um, and then our website, methodandmetric.com. Uh, we have tons of great resources, tons of free tools. Uh, we update our blog almost weekly and yeah, tons of great resources there too. Oh, great. Um, I say, Jesse is an expert in SEO and has been at it a long time, um, or a decade, I believe. You know, so yeah. you know, I say time flies when you're uh, in this business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have crow's feet when we started this. Yeah, so, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, neither did I. Um, <laughs> so this is great. I'm your host of Marketing Masters, Cash Miller, and the CEO of Titan Digital. I hope everybody gets something out of this. And it's uh, on to the next one. Thank you. Thank you.